Okay, welcome. This is just a quick demonstration I'm doing of something that I've just managed to get working. Um, what it is, is basically, um, it's an IP KVM system using a Raspberry Pi. And, um, the inspiration I got for it, well, not inspiration, but one of the reasons why I've ended up doing this is because I was looking for a way of um, controlling a machine remotely and being able to go into the BIOS and the only solution I found at first was this one called Rasky which um, seemed good and I was actually willing to wait for something to come out but it seems they've taken a bit long to for something to happen with them and it seems like he's still doing something but rather than wait I thought I'd look to see if there was a way of doing it um, similar to how he said, using a, a Raspberry Pi. So then, when I searched, I found this um, project, whereby um, he actually managed to get something going where he was using a USB capture card plugged into a laptop in order to read the screen of the actual other machine. But I realized, obviously, it needs to be something, because I wanted something remote, um, I needed something for the Raspberry Pi. So... I looked into try how USB capture works on the Raspberry Pi and it seems it's not that reliable and it would require a bit of work to to get it going. So what I decided in the end is to use this Arduino part of his project but then to use the actual Raspberry Pi camera because it's something which is built in and so obviously it's going to work because it was designed to, for the actual device. So what I've actually ended up with um, is actually a setup, and this is just uh, just got a webcam here, which is just pointing to the how things are connected. So basically, that's um, you can see here the Raspberry Pi, and it's connected via Ethernet, and on top you can see the the, the camera, and then beside there is is actually a uh, Arduino. Um, it's, it's an Arduino Pro, Pro Micro, and basically I've, I've got this LCD display connected to it, and then it's connected, but with a um, it's a bit hard to see, but it's connected with a to this USB, uh, sorry, USB serial, which is then plugged into the Raspberry Pi, and then that's how the information how the keystrokes are sent into the computer and and so basically the other thing I have on this is also I have a um, VNC into the actual Raspberry Pi and this is basically how the keystrokes get sent to the um, actual um, Arduino and basically the, in here is what the program that the uh, was written by the guy in the second page sorry in the second web page and when you run that it produces a Pi game window and when you type into this window what it does it sends the keystrokes through that USB serial to the Raspberry Pi and now to get the video out of the Raspberry, rather than going through VNC, what I've actually decided to do is, as I said, use the internal camera. And the way we can get the information from the camera is basically because this is, uh, we're trying to get this to work over the network. Um, what it has to do is, I'm trying to find, basically what you have to do is to, um, SSH into the Raspberry Pi and then actually send yes so essentially on the machine you're, that you want to view the video you have to set up netcat so it will listen on the port and then send whatever it receives to mplayer and so once you run that it will be there listening waiting for the stream to arrive which, and to get the stream to it, 
you basically SSH to the Pine and then send the port from the local machine to the Raspberry Pi. And that's what the, the dash R is for. And so on the, on there, basically I have a, a script where what it does is it runs the Raspberry vid and then takes the stream and sends it over that port. Sorry, it sends it over the SSH connection to the port which is on the local machine and so when we run that we end up with a video from the Raspberry Pi camera and so there we have the output this is from the camera looking at it and the main advantage with this is that it's to do with the amount of CPU uh, that is actually used because if we check on the on the actual um, Raspberry Pi itself. And we can see how much sort of CPU is being used. And you notice that the yeah, your Raspberry Vid has, hardly shows up. And imagine if you try to do that in software instead, it will be using up a whole load of CPU on the on it but because we're only doing you using actual hardware encoding of the um i presume it's the camera that has the hardware encoding chip in it or the gp i don't know which one and that then compresses the stream and then we can just send it quite a small stream without having to do hardly any work on the cpu so we so there we have the window where where we type the commands in and then here's a screen of this is the view from the raspberry pi and so just to show that it's working if we just type something into this window then it gets sent to the remote machine and so there we have it working now obviously this is something you could do with VNC so the main reason for this setup is not to be able to type into a console on the GUI part because obviously you could set uh, VNC up to do that it's really and this is the reason why I went to all this trouble was to be able to access the BIOS so now if I So if we reboot this, so type the command, this is, all this is typing is from this lo the local machine I'm on. So I'm not actually in the GUI of the remote machine. And so if you press return, And that's one of the good things about FatDog is that it does allow you to um, yeah, it, it does allow you to use the keyboard on the dialogues, which is good. So now the machine's rebooting. So there it says delete to go in the BIOS, so delete, and there you go. And this essentially is the reason why I went to all the trouble all the late nights trying to get this to work, is simply so that I can get into the BIOS on the remote machine. And that's it, and so that's been achieved, which is the all important one. And so basically you can go through and you can choose Press escape to get out. So the keys are working, the arrow keys are working just like how you'd expect it to. And the only important thing is in the BIOS. And so.
So then if we just escape, let's see if. And then one other good thing about this is that because it works in in the BIOS part, is that we can also um, say you end up in a situation where you manage to um, to boot or, or the BIOS tries to boot and say you end up um, stuck for some reason so say we're here and I'm not sure how to I'm just going to see if I can if I can crash it but I don't know Okay, yeah, I know how to do it in Lilo, but not in Grub. So, but say say you you're in this situation and you wanted to to get out, and basically usually what you do is press Control or Delete. But one thing about this situation that we're in at the moment is that if I was to press Control or Delete, what would happen is I'd end up um, it would be passed to the local machine. And so it will never make it to the remote one. And because that's why in VNC you have the option to send control or delete. So basically I had to actually put the same feature into the code of the Arduino as well. And basically in order to send the control or delete to the remote machine, what you have to do is, if you look at the codes on the bottom right, is to press control all and then number two. And then when you press that, it will reboot. And so, so that's from within um, Grub. But I just want to show that it also. So if you go into setup, so we're in the BIOS here. And so normally, when you're in the BIOS, um, you normally just escape to get out. But obviously, well, also you can press. Uh, control or delete as well while you're in the BIOS. So this is really just, just to show that it works and that the BIOS does trap it. So say if I press control or one and let go, nothing happens. Then control or three and nothing happens. And I was just going to show something as well that basically uh, you can tell that it's actually happening because if you go and look you can see the keys which are being sent so if I press control 1 I forgot I've got to So if I press control one. Yeah, see nothing. As you can see the BIOS on the left, nothing happens. Then if I press control three, nothing happens again. But if I press control two, then it reboots. Okay, so that's just a quick demonstration of what I've managed to get working so far. But obviously there's still other things that I can do in the setup to try and improve things. And if anyone's interested in this and wants to, I don't know, help out or etc., then just get in touch and 
um, you know, whatever you can do is to sort of get things moving forward. But of course, I've, I'm going to be doing what I'm doing at the moment just to do a bit more testing and sort of, you know, re- re- well, hope, well, see if I can refine the code. But the main thing I want to do is obviously use it in order to get the machine that I need to sort it out. And hopefully someone else might find, you know, this useful as well. Okay, see you.